In this video, we're gonna look at how we can limit colors to a specific region of our frame using BCC Plus looks. If you didn't know, this effect is free for Final Cut Pro users. Simply head to this website and download it for free today. We're gonna to see how we can use this with built-in Final Cut Pro masking, then take this further with Pixel Chooser that's built into BCC Plus looks, followed by Mocha masking, for those complicated shapes that might appear in your scene. Let's dive into Final Cut Pro and take a look at this robust effect. Okay, so I'm here with the first clip that I would like to work with. And what I'd like to do is have just the red color show up and everything else in the scene be black and white. Now you're gonna find BCC Plus looks if you go to your effects browser under BCC Film Style, and in this category, BCC Plus Looks. Now, if we click on the Effects Editor batch, we'll be presented with a series of presets here on the left-hand side. Since I know I want this to be black and white, I'll switch this from all categories to just black and white looks. And if I click on one, I'll be able to preview that in the main viewer area. One great thing about the viewer is that we are able to do before and after comparisons by clicking on this AB button and then continuing to click until we find a preset that we like and apply that heading back into the Final Cut Pro host. For this first example, I wanna use Final Cut Pro masking, which is available to us at the top of this effect. If we click on this little icon that appears as we hover over the name field, I'll click on this and choose add color mask we're now able to sample a region of our image for the pixels we would like to restrict this effect to. In this case, I'm gonna sample one of these red jerseys here in the background. I'll click and drag to sample more colors. We can see that we got quite a few different red colors there. And I'll expand on this selection by shift clicking and dragging in a different area. Anything that's gray is currently not selected. So you can see how I'm continuing to select these red pixels. However, in this case, we have the opposite of what we want. Right now, the black and white effect is limited to the red shirts. In this case, I wanna switch this around by inverting it. So at the top of BCC Plus Looks, where I went to go to select that color mask, I'll click and hold to invert that mask. Now, the black and white effect is everywhere but the jersey. And if we need to further refine with our pixel here, other elements we want in this image, and by the way, if we can option click to remove pixels we don't want, we can continue to select in that way. Here is the final result. Okay, let's move on to another example. I'm here in a grain and luba project. And the first thing I'm gonna do is apply BCC plus looks to the clip. Like we did before, I'll head to the effects editor and over here on the presets on the left-hand side, let's choose black and white looks. I'll cycle through a few of these that are available to us. And I happen to like this newspaper look, which actually has grain. And if I take a look at the parameters here on the right-hand side, I want you to notice that grain is enabled. In this case, I'm gonna disable this, but apply it in after I've done the color limitation. Let me press apply. We're now back inside of Final Cut. And rather than use Final Cut's built-in masking, I'm gonna rely on Pixel Chooser, which comes with this effect. So if I twirl down these properties, in this case, I just want there to be color in the candle and the brightest regions of this image. Also just reflecting a little bit of that color on the person's skin here. To do that, I'll go down to the matte section. And in order to have these properties light up, I have to go to pixel chooser and just turn this on. I'm gonna choose the luminance channel. And in order to know the matte or area that I'm limiting this effect to, I wanna view this mask mat. In order to refine this so it's only gonna be here in the candles, I'm gonna bring up the black level in this case. So you can see there everything black is, which is what's gonna be unaffected. And I'll also bring up the white level a bit too. And these white and gray areas is where we're gonna see color. At the bottom of the matte section, we need to do two things. One, we're gonna blur this a bit, so it's a bit softer. And two, we're gonna invert the results, right? So now this represents the area that will be in color, 
these black grayish areas. Everything else that's white here, we're not going to see any color whatsoever. I'll go back up to Pixel Chooser here at the top and choose View Matte Mask. I can see here that this effect is quite subtle, so I might go back and play and decrease the black level to introduce a bit more color into the scene. Now, what about that grain? We're just going to apply another BCC Plus Looks effect onto the clip and enable grain for it. So let's add BCC Plus Looks onto the clip. And right here inside of the inspector, let's go all the way down to the close to the bottom of the effect to the grain section and enable that grain. We can play with the size, but in this case, I'm just going to increase it a little bit in the red, green, and blue amount to match the preset, which was 30. And here is our final result. Now let's look at our final example. Now with this specific example, I would like to limit just to see the color in the subject's eyes. And we can see here that this is quite complicated in the fact that at the end of the shot, she blinks. So in order to accomplish this, the first steps are the same as we've done before. I'll apply BCC plus looks to a clip. I'll head inside of the effects editor under presets, choose a black and white look. And I just so happen to want the Hollywood effect. By the way, if we need to change the parameters of this effect, we can do so here in the color correction section. Let me apply that. And since Final Cut masks won't get this job done, we're going to use Mocha for the complexity here. So I'll click on the Mocha mask at the top of BCC plus looks. Now, one great thing about Mocha is its flexibility. I can track another region of this image that matches the movement of the eyes and then link another shape to that in order to get a successful track. Versus if in this case, if I tried to track the eyes, eventually it would become obscured. So when looking at this clip, one thing that matches the movement of the eyes, which are looking straight to the camera, happens to be the eyebrows. What I'm going to do is select the X-spline tool and create a shape around the sharp areas of detail around the eyebrows and just a little bit into the blur area. So that's what we're going to track. And I'm also going to add another shape around the other eyebrow here on the right hand side. To do that, I'll click and hold the X-spline tool to get the X plus button and click to make several points here around that sharp eyebrow and then double click. So both these shapes now lie on layer one in the layers tab and I'll just call this brows. If I play backwards from this point, I can see that there's pretty much just position and a little bit of rotation movement. So I'll go back to the first point where I created these shapes and under the essentials tab, turn off skew and track this forward. I'll then head back to the first point, track it backwards. Excellent. Now it's time to create the shapes for the irises and attach those shapes to the browse track. In order to do this, I'll select the regular X-spline tool. I'm going to hold down Z temporarily to zoom in on this image, followed by the X key in order to pan. And I'm going to double click to make several points on this first iris here. I'll press Command A after that shape is closed, drag these points in and then click off to make any individual adjustments to the points I just made. And now I'll hold down the X key to pan across the image to the other eye and select the X plus tool, making another shape. Double click to close, press Command A, drag in to make it softer, and then make any individual adjustments as required to encompass the entire iris. Now, here in the Layers tab, let's rename that layer to Iris. We'll place it underneath the brows. And most importantly, in the Layer Properties tab, which is behind the Essentials tab, head to the link to track and attach it to the brows. Now I'm going to press Shift 8 to zoom out and then just press the play button to show you that the eyes are following the tracking information of the brows. Now we might need to make some subtle adjustments throughout the piece. I can see as the track goes further along, we want the shape of the eyes on both sides to be bigger and make subtle adjustments throughout to perfect the shape. The magical part about this is that we don't have to adjust every keyframe. We just have to make adjustments on the frames that require it. And Mocha is then going to interpolate that data as in the shape and the track are separate. OK, now that we've made the adjustments on the eyes, it's time to handle the blink and to make sure that this shape is going to be obscured when we head back into Final Cut. In order to achieve this, we need to create yet another mask. I'm going to identify the frame just before the blink, which is 
around this point here at 920, I'll now come up here to select the X spline tool and draw a mask around the left eyelid. Once double clicking the first point to close, I'll press Command A and drag all these points inwards to soften that mask. And now just under the X spline tool, I'll select the X plus tool and repeat this step on the other side. Press Command A, drag inward. Okay, before anything else, we need to do a couple things. One is I'm gonna first of all rename my layer to subtract, and I'm also gonna change its color here so we're able to see it a little bit better. I'm also gonna make sure that the subtract layer is set to subtract, and in order for this to work, it needs to be at the top here in the Layers tab. Just keep that in mind. Since we only need to animate this for just a second, under Layer Properties, I'm gonna trim the endpoint of this layer to start at this point. And last but not least, I'm gonna connect these eyelashes to the brows that we tracked earlier. This is gonna simplify the adjustments we need to make on each frame. Okay, now that that's set up, let's go through this frame by frame. Down on the timeline, I'll move a few frames forward. Excellent. And now adjust the shape of the lower part of the lid. So we can select multiple points at once to simplify this process. I'll move a few more frames forward, adjust again, and continue repeating this process. Okay, now that we have this set up on one side, with the subtract mat selected and the iris shape, I'm gonna press option one in order for you to see the overlays of each of these masks. Let's see what happens to the iris. It gets completely obscured by the subtract mat here on the right hand side, which is exactly what we want. We're gonna, gonna repeat this step on the left. So I'll deselect both of those layers in the layers tab, select the subtract mat, go back to the first frame and repeat this process. And once satisfied, click on the close button and we'll save to head back into Final Cut Pro. And back here in Final Cut, again, we have the opposite of what we want. The black and white is limited to the eyes only and we want to reverse this. So I'm gonna head into Pixel Chooser Mocha, into the mask section and invert this mask. I'll also add just a little bit of feather around the eyes of about six, just to soften that a bit. You can see that we have a pretty decent job here of the color limited to the subject's eyes with the blink. Now, while I see I have to do a little bit of refinement of the mask on this frame, we can easily step back into Mocha, which has all of our information, head back to the subtract mask and refine this accordingly. And here is our final result. As you can see with BCC Plus looks, there are several things that we can do in terms of limiting color to a specific region of the frame while having access to incredible black and white looks with grain as well as diffusion. To start using this incredibly versatile tool inside of Final Cut, you can download BCC Plus looks for free today. For more tips and tricks just like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd love to know what you'd like to see in the next video.